Well, Gilbert, welcome to our On The Couch program. Wonderful to have you here. Pleasure to be here. So you are our General Manager at Harcourts International, but you have another life as well. You are also the mental skills coach for the New Zealand All Blacks, who've had enormous success of recent years. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I have, um, I'm really privileged to have that role, and I'm, I'm passionate about the role. It's, uh, it's a role that I've had for 14 years now. Um, you know, to put that in context, the All Blacks over the last 100 years have had 515 test matches and I have been in my role as a full-time member of that management team for 167 of those. So I've had more test matches than any player or any coach or any other management person, so I've been with the world's most successful international team for the longest of any person. We're very privileged to have you in our business around that. So what are some of the things that you see? You've been with the team clearly a very long time. You've seen people come and go. You've experienced enormous success. What are some of the attributes that you see elite sports people like the New Zealand All Black players have? It's a good question, Sardina. The, you know, a lot of people are looking for silver bullets and secret techniques that can lead to success. And, and my observations over the 14 years that I've worked with these talented elite people is that um, there's no secret bullet, there's no secret technique, there's no magic bullet. Um, talents are given because when you're operating in that arena, it's a level playing field, everyone's talented. What does separate those people that become exceptional performers and under pressure and consistently are those that make good choices about what they do and what they don't do. So. They have available to them lots and lots of different options and activities that they can engage in and the choices that they make about what they do and don't do inevitably lead to the successes that, that they get. So if we bring that into real estate, there are a number of choices that our people have. There is an even playing field pretty much for everyone when they join the industry and they have you know, a, a certain level of experience, is a level playing field. To get themselves from a level playing field to an elite playing field, what are some of the things that our agents need to focus on that will take them there? Well, you know, I think a lot of it's around mindset and um, you know, I've had uh, over a decade in the Harcourts group, which, which I've loved enormously too, and, and I've seen a lot, a lot of talented people. And I've seen a lot of people who are not as talented as well, but are still successful. And you know the old the old adage around making sure you work hard, um, making sure you're focusing on the right things that enable you to get the success that you need, so that you're not doing the important many. You've identified the things that are critical for you, where you're at at this particular point in time. You're making sure that you can push through the obstacles that inevitably get in your way, because there will always be those. I've I've witnessed people in in, in the All Blacks and and in the um, executive world who have self-doubt, um, who have experienced failure, uh, but it's been their innate drive to push through those times and to continue to move forward that's enabled them to inevitably prevail. And quite often um, they make or they experience success when they quite often least expect it, but it's because they've had the drive to continue to pursue and to make good choices about what they do to improve themselves as performers. How important do you think it is to have a coach or a mentor? Well, I think um, one of the things I've learned is that um, all the successful people I know um, basically have worked out who they need to talk to in the lead up to competition, during competition, after competition. And if you apply that to business, the successful people I know in business have worked out who they need to have around them while they're preparing for business, while they're doing the business and reflecting on afterwards. And I'm a great proponent of good to great philosophy that everyone has a bus. You get the right people on the bus, you get the wrong people off the bus and you make sure the right people are sitting in the right seats and every individual should have their own personal bus. And that involves a mentor and a coach um, and a tour mentor probably, mm -hmm. someone who can actually you know, give it to you straight when you're not doing the things that are going to enable you to get the success that you desire or, or you crave. Brutal honesty sometimes. Brutal honesty is a very, very good thing. Yeah. 
it, you know, I've, I'm an AFL supporter and I watch a lot of games. And one of the things, you know, talking about brutal honesty that I notice on the field, if, if something goes wrong or a wrong decision is taken or, you know, the ball doesn't get passed on correctly, the feedback the players get is immediate. The accountability from the coach or the coaching team is immediate. So, you know, we take that back into business. Accountability is something we all fight and we don't like. But how important is it in business to have levels of accountability? You know, accountability is huge. You know, the, it's a science. You know, if you, we can easily say to ourselves that having an accountability system is absolutely essential for success in business and sport and life. The art of it is, is how you actually put a system of accountability in place. Now, you know, sometimes it's important to give brutal honesty but other times you have to pick the time to give that brutal honesty, so it becomes an art. We've found in sport that um, when we are driving towards success and the pressure's the biggest, that if you see it, you've got to say it. Uh, there's other times where it's not appropriate, but wrapped up in all that is an accountability system that individuals work at in a way that provides a good, solid platform for them to perform. So absolutely agree and it's just how you actually put that into your structure is the crucial thing. So I guess uh, to wrap it up, if you intend to be elite at, at what you do, you need to have levels of accountability, you need to be open to having the, um, the feedback from people around you that you've put to, to keep mm -hmm. you accountable, but most important, importantly you need to have a game plan as to how you're going to get there. Yeah, like planning's, um, planning's really, really important and you know like one of the one of the key paradigms to really challenge is the goal setting paradigm. You know, like we talk all the time that we're challenging people to have goals and aspiring to achieve things, but to get the understanding that that in itself is not enough to get the success you want because you can have a goal but if you're not passionate about it and you don't work hard enough and you don't focus on the right things and you don't push yourself through the obstacles and you're not creating new ideas to help you get better and you're not persisting through the challenging times and you won't achieve them. So the game plan's got to have an understanding about what really what really leads to success and it, it, it's, it's those other factors outside um, what a lot of people think are uh, structured around goal setting that make the difference for you. Gilbert, thanks for joining us today. Your insights, as always, are incredible to listen to. Now you're coming back to us with us next month to talk about motivation. And we look forward to listening to your thoughts on that. Thank you. Your pleasure.